Good afternoon and welcome to Willows Green Permaculture. In this week's video, I'd like to give you a bunch of tips and tricks that are going to help you maximize your harvest and save you time. And uh, they're really easy to do. And so let's get started. So here we are in our Three Sisters Demo Garden. Our squash, corn, and our beans. It's doing really well. And I'd like it to continue doing really well. And one of the things that's going to make it do really well is the squash. And so here, I'm going to show you a trick of how you can make sure your squash don't get destroyed by the squash vine borer. If you have a look at this vine that's growing really well, you can see it's covered by some leaves. I did that several days ago, uh, a few days ago, and I'm going to continue to do that. You can see here, there's a leaf here, a leaf node, another leaf here with a leaf node, another one here. Well, all you need to do to protect your plant from the squash vine borer is take, you could take a little bit of straw, you could take some leaves, and we've got a lot of leaves here which are almost all, all decomposed, and just cover that vine up a little bit and help it to come in contact with the soil. I'm going to do it here too. I'm going to cover it up. The flower, if it flowers, it's going to come up through those leaves anyway. All right, so I'm covering that up and what's going to happen is I'm even going to cover the end a little bit so that it co comes down as it grows. What's going to happen is at these leaf nodes here, the vine is going to sprout new roots. And so if the vine at its base or at any other point has had the eggs of a squash vine borer laid and, and the squash vine borer go into the vine, the vine will continue to grow because it's going to have roots elsewhere. Usually a vine borer kills a plant when it attacks the base or somewhere else and nothing else has been done, especially if you have your, your vines grow up in the air and stuff like that. But if your vines get a chance to grow other roots elsewhere, then the plant will continue to thrive. So here we are in our pumpkin patch and uh, I haven't quite finished uh, thinning out all of uh, my pumpkins. I'm a little bit late with that and my squash. Um, and I'm going to show you a trick. Uh, if you're worried about thinning out your pumpkins because you're worried about you, you thin them out and the ones you have left get attacked or something and then they're all dead. Well, one thing you can do if you're not quite thinning them out is you can, as I, I'm going to show you here. So all you really need are three pumpkin plants per mound. So we've got, I've got one here, I've got one here, and I've got one here. So I've got a few too many. And so I'm going to take a few, I'm going to take a couple out here. And this is what I'm going to do. So if you come in a little bit closer here. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just cut the outer leaves all the big leaves and I'm going to leave a tiny little leaf at the base here just in case something happens to the others this one can still grow and as you can see I've done it with all the others okay and so they're they're quite small and I'm going to do the same thing with this one so I'm going to do it again cut these leaves these scissors keep getting stuck on me just cut them I could also just pinch them with my hands and there because all I really need are the three plants and these leaves well, you can bring them inside and you can eat them. So that's another way you can feel better about thinning out your pumpkins because you, 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 you can harvest them and you can use them like spinach and they're quite delicious. If you want to have the biggest garlic bulbs, apart obviously from weeding and so on, one of the, the best strategies for getting bigger bulbs is if you've got the type of garlic that grows garlic scapes, which uh, are the hardneck variety, which is what we grow here in, in Ontario, then you need to take off the garlic scapes, which are these things. We've taken most of them off, so I, I had to look for, for a couple so I could show the example. Here they are. Here's the garlic scape. 
So it's uh, it'll often be uh, twirly, like it'll go in twirls and so on. This is this one's starting to do it, and so here it is. I'm going to straighten it out. What it's eventually going to do is create a a little uh, bulb here with a whole bunch of which with maybe at least a dozen bulblets, a, a dozen tiny little mini garlics, which you could go which if you did let it grow, you could take them and plant them. But they take a good two years before they give you good garlic bulbs. Um, now, if you don't want to do that, if you want to concentrate on just getting the biggest bulbs possible, then all you need to do is take this off, and I'll show you how. All you need to do is, is put it between your fingers and then just snap it off like that. You don't have to pull out the plant or anything. And these things are really good. You can make a pesto out of them. You can add them to a stir fry, cook them with your pasta, all sorts of stuff. You can even eat them raw, but they're a little sharp, but um, mm, well, they're quite good. So, you want to get some extra tomatoes in your in your garden. One way you can increase pollination is by helping the tomatoes along by imitating the the movement of the wind or the movement of of little bees and so on on your on your flowers because. Uh, tomato tomatoes are, are pollinated by the wind also by insects that move them around like the wind so all you need to do if you want to have some extra pollination just take a nice light stick and just tap the plant like this watch so you just tap it a little very lightly you don't want to break your plant and so basically the flowers are shaking a little as if they're being blown by the wind or or if there's a bee kind of buzzing around them and that's going to help pollinate them a little more just a few seconds like that. I'll do this one too. Just a few seconds like that and there you go. And you're gonna get extra pollination. You can do the same thing for peppers, for eggplants as well. Now while we're here, we got the, the calendula, some calendula here growing around the carrots outside of the tomato. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of uh, buds here. And if you want your calendula to produce more buds and lots of buds, then what you wanna do is continuously harvest the the big open flowers and so that you can eat them put them in salads or or make a make some skin cream with them or something like that um, and then that then the plant's going to concentrate on putting out more bulbs and then if you want to collect seeds because they produce a lot of seeds so towards the end of the season you'll stop harvesting your flowers i would say whenever about a month before the end of your season what you're going to want to do is in that month, if you want to still harvest flowers, what you want to do is before you harvest flowers, you want to check for other flower buds. If you don't see other flower buds growing, then maybe leave those flowers there towards the end of your season because those are the ones that are going to give you seeds. And each flower should give you at least about, oh, between 10 and 20 or even some more seeds. Uh, but in the meantime, well, harvest and enjoy. Just like the tomatoes, you can increase your pollination of peppers by doing that gentle tap on the plant to shake the flowers a little bit. So we got our, our peppers, a couple of our peppers are just starting to give flowers. This one's not open, so that's probably not gonna do anything. But if the flowers are open, then the tap should help. So here we can see uh, lots of our basil growing. That basil there has got a lot of space and it's uh, growing nice and thickly. And what I'd like to show you here is how you can get it to grow nice and thickly, sort of thick little bunches like that. And so here we've got some that, you know, because of the, the broccoli and the cauliflower, some of them are not quite so thickly growing. All you need to do is pinch off the top leaves so as you can see, if you look in, you can look here, um, here's the top leaves here. And just below the top leaves, you've got a couple little branches there. And below that, you've got more branches. So by pinching off the top, it's the branches below that are going to develop. And if they start growing and you still, it's not, still not bushy enough for you, then just pinch some more. Okay, and as you pinch, it's going to be double, double the branches that are going to grow beneath. You can do this with scissors if you want or you can just pinch them and just bring them into the kitchen and enjoy them.
So here we have some of our sugar snap peas, or some snow peas, and some blue cappuccino peas. As you can see, these, these vines are getting really, really tall, and they're starting to get taller than the trellis that I've put up. And they're also, they're also getting so tall that I'm not even gonna be able to reach the top. Now, I don't want them to grow too much taller because if they get, they will grow to, even taller than that. My trellises could have been taller, I guess. But if they grow too much taller, then they're gonna start bending over in the wind and in the rain, and eventually they could bring the whole thing down if I don't, uh, if I don't make my trellis even stronger. However, one thing I can do to get more peas and also to prevent it from growing any taller is I can simply trim the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim the tops of these vines like this. Don't worry if you're taking out a few flowers and a few little mini peas. These plants are so abundant that, uh, uh, that they got tons of them. And the thing is, what's gonna happen now is because I'm trimming the tops, the pea plant, well, what it's thinking is that there are animals eating the tops. They're thinking I'm an animal eating the top. And so the pea plant is going to put out more branches below. Because the thing is, as the pea plant ages, as it gets hotter and so on, then they're, they're, the, the brand, and as you, as you harvest the peas, there are fewer peas below and more peas above. But by trimming the top, you provoke the plant to put out more branches in midway and even below and then you can get some more peas. And uh, you can do exactly the same thing with your bean vines. Now, while we're here, another thing I'm gonna show you to get, and oh, by the way, and this, these, these vines here, they're wonderful because they're full of nutrients. I'm just gonna pull the little peas off so I can eat them. And then uh, the vines, well, all you have to do is use them as mulch because they're full of nutrients. Another thing you can do to maximize your pea harvest is as you see your peas starting to get to ripe, well, that's when you want to harvest a whole bunch of them. Just keep harvesting them, keep eating them. Don't let them get so ripe that they start to lose their color and they start to dry up. Because if your peas get so, which is eventually what you're going to want to do if you want to have winter peas and dried peas, eventually you're going to want to do that. But if you want to extend their season and you want to get more and more peas, you want at, at the beginning not to let them do that. Because if you let them do that, what's going on is the plant is successfully creating its seeds. And that's what every plant wants to do. Just like everybody wants to have kids. Well, every plant wants to have kids too. And its kids are its seeds. And if it's successful in producing a whole bunch of seeds, then the plant's gonna say, now I get to rest and just enjoy the rest of the summer. And so it'll shut down and stop producing. And so if you want more peas and you gotta keep harvesting them and uh, keep eating them. And then when you've harvested enough, when you've frozen your peas for the, your fresh peas for eating fresh like that for the winter and you've eaten enough with your meals, then the, whole, the rest of them, you can let them ripen and dry up. And those dried peas, well, those will be the ones that you're gonna use for seeds and that you're gonna use to have dried that'll last you all winter and not gonna take up any space for you. And what I do is I let them dry on the vine. Uh, by letting them dry on the vine, uh, they, they dry really, really well. I might lose a few to little animals, but what happened last year when I did it because last year I waited really long because we had guests for a few weeks and so on. And, and so I waited an extra amount of time and together with our guests, we harvested all the dry peas. But because I waited a long time and a, a couple weeks after we harvested them all, we saw peas growing all over the garden because little animals had harvested them as well and had planted them everywhere for us. So here are our beets. This particular area are from homegrown seed and they were the ones I planted first and I, did, I direct seeded them outside. These aren't the ones that you saw me transplanting a month or so ago. 
and now they're really thick. I've already harvested a couple of them and they need to be thinned out. But the thing is with beets, you can wait because beets don't mind growing uh, closely together to each other because they just push each other out. So now I'm gonna show you how you can thin them out and, and while harvesting at the same time. So you're gonna need to come really close. I'm gonna try and open this up so that you can really see inside. I let the sunlight in. So right here, there are three beets all stuck together. So that may have been come out from one single seed or maybe there was more than one seed. Now I wanna harvest two of these and leave the third one there. Now the best way to do this so that the third one can continue to grow well, it's simple. All you need to do is put your fingers on the one that you want to stay in place, put a good amount of pressure on that. I don't, can you see my, I don't know if you can see my fingers, but um, you, you, put, you put pressure on that beet that's staying in place. And also it's preferable to do this after a rain. It rained yesterday, so the ground is nice and loose. Okay, now I'm, gonna, I'm feeling this move, so I'm gonna give it more pressure in the direction that it's wanting to move, and then you gently pull. Okay, and now I'm gonna pull this one too. Gently pull. And because I've pulled these two beets, I just pull them out completely, get them out of the way. Now I'm still holding this one, I haven't done anything. Obviously this can be done a lot faster, but I'm doing it slowly so you can see what I'm doing. Now what I'm gonna do is, the, the ground is loose around it, and I'm just gonna push the ground up that was loosened by those other two beets that I pulled out. It's gonna push that around the base of that beet so it doesn't fall over, so it can stay standing and continue to re receive the sunlight. And there you go. So here we have a couple of beautiful beets ready for the kitchen. You can also eat the, the leaves and the stems, stems like celery, leaves like spinach, and they're all really healthy. And then that other beet that stayed there, well, it's gonna be able to continue to grow and you can harvest that later. With the carrots, it's essentially the same thing as the beets as far as thinning it out. The ones that I transplanted, I don't need to thin out. They have enough space to grow as I explained when I transplanted them. However, these carrots, I direct sow. As usual, when I direct sow carrots, there are just so many of them because I never get around to thinning them out. So if you can come closer, you can see how many carrots there are here. So there are a whole ton of them. And so the, the, you can thin them out the way I showed with the beets by kind of putting pressure around the carrots. And so you thin out a bunch of them. Now, they're really, really small and they're gonna, gonna kind of stay that way if I don't thin them out. So I'm gonna thin a bunch of them out, but these little ones, they're quite delicious and very sweet, okay? And, um, and they will, as long as they've got space enough to grow, they will continue to grow and they will, they will be able to get somewhat bigger but if I don't thin this out a little bit, they're not gonna get really, really big. Now, if this is too much work, another thing you can do is take a pair of scissors and then simply go along, let's say a row of carrots that I'll just arbitrarily choose here, and you just kind of cut every second or third carrot. Make sure you leave some in between and then the ones in between will have space to grow. And the thing is, the ones that you cut, at this point, they're already grown a little, so they already have some, some carrot root. And so that carrot root 
is going to have energy. And so what's going to happen is the ones that I didn't cut will be able to get a lot bigger because the ones that have the carrot root, they might still grow. Many things could happen. Uh, they'll, they'll just kind of bide their time. They'll grow little tiny branches. Um, and then the bigger carrots will grow. We'll harvest them. And when we harvest them, those little carrots that were cut back, that's maybe when they're going to start to grow. And so it's almost like you're going to have successive carrots. Or another possibility is sometimes when carrots are so close together and you cut a carrot top like that, the roots that, that's left back will fuse with the carrot beside it. Uh, sometimes that even happens if you don't cut them back. So you can have two carrots side by side growing really close together and they fuse together. Sometimes you can have three or four of them fusing together and they make all sorts of interesting uh, designs. There are so many carrots here that I can just randomly pull a whole bunch at a time and there's still going to be a ton left to fill the space that I'm pulling out of. And carrots have such deep roots. I mean, look at this. Look at how long that is. I don't need to worry about the ones that are left in place, about trying to tap them, tamp them back down. They're going to be fine. The, the soil is very loose today and, and very moist and so those carrots that are left in place, even if they've been slightly moved and stuff, they are going to be just fine. So that's the less delicate way of doing it and it works too. I'm going to see how these do. These once again are the carrots that I didn't transplant, that I planted so directly and so I have to thin them. I'm not a big fan of doing this, but anyway, there it's done. Now I got a whole bunch of carrots I can uh, bring inside. So here is our carrot thinning harvest. You can eat this whole, they can eat these young greens too. In a salad, like it was parsley or coriander. And uh, here's that little carrot area. Got a lot of carrots kind of lying down and going in every direction but they're all going to stand back up and uh, they're going to be good and if some of them uh, don't stand up as well as the others well the roots are going to still be there and uh, maybe when they uh, when they come back into their own while well, we will have been harvesting other carrots around them and then they'll be able to get big later in the season these little carrots are great to eat as snacks put in soups put in a salad I love to just eat them as, as a snack because I'm always hungry. It's great to have some sweet things lying around and just uh, pop in your mouth. Nice and crunchy and sweet. For comparison's sake, here are the carrots that I transplanted a few weeks ago at the base of what would eventually be the tomatoes. And uh, so they were each in their little individual pots. I do not plan on thinning these because as you can see between each bunch of carrots there's space. So these bases of carrots they're going to expand out. They're going to push out on each other and eventually fill some of this space and be able to grow bigger. Well we'll see anyway how well they do but I've seen it before and they're doing really well here. I'm happy how big they're getting at the base of these tomato plants before these tomatoes get too big. So, I've got one last tip for you that's going to help you have the best harvest ever. And that is, make sure you're drinking water while you're gardening. We think about watering our plants and we forget about watering ourselves. And so, you got to stay healthy. And if you stay healthy, then you're going to be able to do better in your garden and have bigger harvests and have lots of Mm, food and so I hope you liked the video I hope you found it useful and if you found it useful then please share it with your friends and if you haven't done so yet then subscribe support our channel just by subscribing and have a great week 
Take care of yourselves. Keep drinking your water. And we will see you next time.